after studying this module, you shall be able to know the terms related to the field of neurology and neuropsychology, understand how neuropsychological assessment is done, understand the different methods of neuropsychological examination like history taking, mental status examination and physical examination, identify the different tools of neuropsychological assessment including interviews, rating scales, case histories, tests and test batteries. Neurology is the branch of medicine that focuses on the nervous system and its disorders. The branch of psychology that focuses on the relationship between brain functioning and behavior is neuropsychology. Psychologists doing clinical evaluation are trained to screen for signs and symptoms of neurological deficit. These signs and symptoms may present themselves during history taking, interviewing or test taking. The objective of the typical neuropsychological evaluation is to draw inferences about the structural and functional characteristics of a person's brain by evaluating an individual's behavior in defined stimulus response situations as said by Benton in 1994. In this module, we survey some of the tools used by clinicians and neuropsychologists to screen for and diagnose neuropsychological and cognitive disorders. The Neuropsychological Examination The Neuropsychological Examination The psychological tests and other procedures employed in a neuropsychological examination is guided by the purpose of the examination, the neurological intactness of the examinee and thoroughness of the examination. During the course of assessment in a clinical setting, the clinician may be alerted to suspicious findings signaling that a more in-depth neuropsychological examination should be conducted. A battery of tests is administered in such a case which may include an intelligence test, a personality test, a perceptual motor or memory test. If neurological signs are discovered in the course of the evaluation, the examinee is referred for further and more detailed evaluation. A neuropsychological examination may also be done to find out more about the cognitive and behavioral consequences of a suspected lesion due to brain damage. The neuropsychological examination generally includes history taking, mental status examination and administration of tests and procedures designed to uncover any problems of neuropsychological functioning. The history. The typical neuropsychological examination begins with a history taking. This includes the medical history of the patient, the medical history of his immediate family, presence or absence of certain developmental milestones, psychosocial history including level of academic achievement and estimated level of intelligence, adjustment, personality, thought processes, motivation, etc. The Neuropsychological Mental Status Examination The Neuropsychological Mental Status Examination is based on questions pertaining to assessee's consciousness, emotional state, handwriting, handedness, language, performance of action, memory, sensory perception, speech and thought content and clarity. The mental status examination administered for express purpose of evaluating neuropsychological functioning may delve more extensively into specific areas of interest. Throughout the history taking and the mental status examination, the clinician must take notes on the gross and subtle observations pertinent to the evaluation. Physical examination. The extent of the physical examination varies widely based on the function, expertise, competence and confidence of the examiner. The examiner may make observations regarding the examinee's appearance, the scalp and skull, 
for any unusual enlargements or depressions, tone and strength of muscles and reflexes. A complete examination is designed to assess not only the functioning of the brain but aspects of the functioning of the nerves, muscles and other organs and systems as well. Tools of Neuropsychological Assessment A variety of tests and measurement procedures have been developed to assess all conceivable aspects of neuropsychological functioning. This section focuses on a sample of these specialized tools that not only include psychological tests but also interviews and rating scales. Interviews and Rating Scales A variety of structured interviews and rating forms are available as aids in the neuropsychological screening and evaluation process. Some of these measures such as the short portable mental status questionnaire are completed by an assessor whereas the neuropsychological impairment scale is a self-report instrument. The mini mental status exam was developed by Folstein et al. 1975 to screen individuals for cognitive impairment including attention, concentration, language, orientation and memory. Individuals showing symptoms of Parkinson's disease can be identified by the use of the 7-minute screen as developed by Solomon et al. 1998 which taps orientation, verbal fluency and various aspects of memory. Case histories and case studies Case history files are particularly valuable resources in neuropsychological assessment. To determine the level of functioning and the neuropsychological inactness of a patient prior to any trauma, disease or other disabling factors, case history data ranging from archival records to videotapes made with the family camera act as tools for determining the pre-morbid level of functioning. Published cases of people with the same or similar type of neuropsychological deficit may be of great value to the assessor. It may provide direction regarding areas of evaluation to explore in depth and can also suggest the course a particular deficit or disease will follow and how observed strengths and weaknesses may change over time. Tests A variety of tests are used by neuropsychologists, clinical psychologists, school and educational psychologists to find answers to referral questions and by researchers to gauge changes in the mental status or other variables due to disorders or medication. In this section, we will study about some tests that are used to evaluate executive functioning, general intellectual ability, verbal functioning, memory, perceptual motor functions and other variables. Wisconsin Card Sorting Test, also known as WCST. The Wisconsin Card Sorting Test is a neuropsychological test of set shifting, that is, the ability to display flexibility in the face of changing schedules of reinforcement. The Wisconsin Card Sorting Test was written by David A. Grant and Esther A. Burke. Four stimulus cards incorporate three stimulus parameters including color, form and number. Respondents are required to sort numbered response cards according to different principles and to alter their approach during test administration. To complete the task, clients should have normal or corrected vision and hearing sufficient to adequately comprehend the instructions and to visually discriminate the stimulus parameters. The test takes approximately 12 to 20 minutes to carry out and generates a number of psychometric scores including numbers, percentages and percentiles of categories achieved, trials, errors and perseverative errors. Completion of the Wisconsin card sorting test requires the ability to develop and maintain an appropriate problem solving strategy across changing stimulus conditions in order to achieve a future goal. Unlike other measures of abstraction, the Wisconsin card sorting test provides objective measures of overall success and identifies particular sources of difficulty on the task, example, 
inefficient initial conceptualization, perseveration, failure to maintain a cognitive set, inefficient learning across stages of the test. When used with more comprehensive ability testing, the Wisconsin card sorting test is helpful in discriminating frontal from non-frontal lesion. The Wisconsin card sorting test 64 card version requires the test taker to sort a pack of 64 cards that contain different geometric figures printed in different colors. The cards are to be sorted according to matching rules that must be inferred and that shift as the test progresses. Successful performance on this test requires several abilities associated with frontal lobe functioning including concentration, cognitive ability in shifting set, inhibition of impulsive reading, organization and working memory. Weschler Intelligence Scale The Weschler Intelligence Scales were developed by Dr. David Weschler, a clinical psychologist with Bellevue Hospital. His initial test, the Weschler Bellevue Intelligence Scale, was published in 1939 and was designed to measure intellectual performance by adults. Weschler constructed the WBIS based on his observation that at the time existing intelligence tests for adults were merely adaptations of tests for children and had little face validity for older age groups. The Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale 3, WISE 3, is intended for use with adults. The Weschler Intelligence Scale for Children 3, WISC 3, is designed for children aged 6 to 16, while the Weschler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence Revised, that is WPPSIR, is designed for children aged 4 to 6 and a half years. The procedures for administering and scoring the three Weschler scales are similar. Each test has two batteries of subtests grouped into two general areas, the verbal scales and the performance scales. The verbal scales measure general knowledge, language, reasoning and memory skills while the performance scales measure spatial, sequencing and problem solving skills. The tests are administered to individual examinees by trained examiners using a complex set of test materials. Testing requires approximately 90 minutes. Raw scores on each test are converted to standard scores with a mean of 10 and standard deviation of 3. Scale scores in the verbal battery are summed and converted to a verbal IQ score. The same is done for the performance scale scores which yield the performance IQ score. In turn, the verbal and performance IQ scores are summed and converted to obtain the full scale overall IQ score. The verbal performance and full scale IQ scores are normative IQs having a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15. Full scale scores beyond 130 place an individual in the superior or gifted range. Scores between 120 to 129 are classed as very high. Scores between 110 to 119 are bright normal. Classifications of other scores are 90 to 109 average, 85 to 89 low, average 70 to 84 borderline mental functioning, 50 to 69 mild mental retardation, 35 to 49 moderate retardation, 20 to 34 severe retardation and below 20 to 25 profound retardation. In addition, the WISC-3 and WISE-3 include supplementary index scales that provide measures of verbal comprehension, perceptual organization, processing speed and working memory. The index scores also have means of 100 and standard deviation of 15. The manual includes procedures for determining if the examinee's performance includes areas of strengths or weaknesses. Essentially, 
A given test or index score must deviate from other test or index scores or from the verbal performance or overall test means by given amounts in order for the score to be considered a significant departure from his or her performance on the other tests. Due to the varied nature of the tasks on the Weschler scales and the wide variety of responses required, make it a good tool to bring light on the existence of any neuropsychological deficit. Difficulties in attention, concentration or conceptualization might be noted during the administration of the arithmetic items, a possible clue to a neurological deficit as opposed to a lack of arithmetic ability. Certain patterns of test responses indicate particular deficits which will be looked at beyond performance on individual test to a study of the patterns of the test scores which is also known as pattern analysis. Extremely poor performance on the block design and other performance subtests in a record that contains relatively high scores on all the verbal tests in combination with other data lead the examiner to suspect damage in the right hemisphere. Mooney's closure faces test. Neurologically impaired people may exhibit difficulty and in making sense out of fragmented or jumbled stimuli and tests such as Mooney's closure faces test are designed to assess the existence and extent of this deficit. In the test, the patient is shown low information two-tone pictures of faces and is asked to identify features and distinguish between the real and false faces. Since facial recognition occurs mainly in the right hemisphere of the brain, it is a test of right brain functionality and a concept he called perceptual closure or the ability to form coherent mental pictures with very little visual information. Neuropsychological test batteries. On the basis of the mental status examination, the physical examination and the case history data, the neurologist typically administers a neuropsychological battery to comprehensively sample the patient's neuropsychological functioning. Halstead Retin Neuropsychological Battery. The Halstead Retin Neuropsychological Test Battery is a fixed set of eight tests used to evaluate brain and nervous system functioning in individuals aged 15 years and older. The Halstead Retin evaluates a wide range of nervous system and brain functions, including visual, auditory, and tactual input verbal communication, spatial and sequential perception, the ability to analyze information, form mental concepts and make judgments, motor output and attention, concentration and memory. The Halstead Retin is typically used to evaluate individuals with suspected brain damage. The battery also provides useful information regarding the cause of damage for example, closed head injury, alcohol abuse, Alzheimer's disorder or stroke, which part of the brain was damaged, whether the damage occurred during childhood development and whether the damage is getting worse, staying the same or getting better. Information regarding the severity of impairment and areas of personal strengths can be used to develop plans for rehabilitation or care. A total of 208 pictures consisting of geometric figures are presented. For each picture, individuals are asked to decide whether they are reminded of the number 1, 2, 3 or 4. They press a key that corresponds to their number of choice. If they choose correctly, a chime sounds. If they choose incorrectly, a buzzer sounds. The pictures are presented in seven subtests. The key to this test is that one principle or common characteristic underlies each subtest. The numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 represent the possible principles. If individuals are able to recognize the correct principle in one picture, 
they will respond correctly for the remaining pictures in that subtest. The next subtest may have the same or different underlying principle and individuals must again try to determine the principles using the feedback of the chime and the buzzer. The last subtest contains two underlying principles. The test takes approximately one hour to complete but individuals with severe brain damage may take as long as two hours. Scoring involves recording the number of errors. Based on traditional scoring using cutoff values, that is cutoff scores are scores that indicate the borderline between normal and impaired functioning. Scores above 41 are considered indicative of brain impairment for ages 15 to 45. For ages 46 and older, scores above 46 indicate impairment. Reton has suggested a cutoff of 50 or 51 errors. Recommended cutoffs also vary depending on age and educational level. Interpretation of the Halstead Reton involves analysis of various factors. Overall performance on the battery, the Halstead Impairment Index, also known as the HII, and the General Neuropsychological Deficit Scale, which is GNDS, are commonly used to obtain an overall score. The HII is calculated by counting the total number of tests in the impaired range and dividing that number by the total tests administered, resulting in a decimal between 0 and 1. 0, 0.0 to 0 0.2 refers to normal functioning, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 is mild impairment, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 is moderate impairment, and 0.8 to 1.0 is severe impairment in the functioning. The GNDS is calculated by assigning the value between 0 and 4 to 42 variables obtained in the tests, then summing those values that is 0 to 25 is normal functioning, 26 to 40 is mild impairment, 41 to 67 is moderate impairment and 68 and above is severe impairment. Performance on individual tests. Each test must be interpreted in relation to the other tests in the battery. Significantly poor performance on one test may be due to various factors, however, if a pattern of poor performance occurs on three or more tests or if significant discrepancies occur on two or more tests, impairment is likely. Indication of lateralization and localization. This refers to the particular region of the brain that is damaged. Performance on sensory and motor tasks provides the necessary clues. With this information, a psychologist can diagnose the type of condition present, predict the course of the impairment, that is, is it staying the same, is it getting better or is it getting worse, and make recommendations regarding the treatment, care and rehabilitation of the individual. The Luria Nebraska Neuropsychological Battery The Luria Nebraska Neuropsychological Battery, also known as the LNNB, or Luria Nebraska battery is a standardized test battery used in the screening and evaluation of neuropsychologically impaired individuals. The Luria Nebraska neurological battery was designed in an attempt to combine the qualitative techniques of some neurological tests with the quantitative techniques of others. However, the scoring system that most clinicians use is primarily quantitative. The battery measures specific neuropsychological functioning in several areas, including motor skills, language abilities, intellectual abilities, non-verbal auditory skills, and visual spatial skills. The battery is used by clinicians as a screening tool to determine whether a significant brain injury is present or to learn more about known brain injuries. It is also used to determine what the patient is or is not able to do with regard to neuropsychological functioning. 
For example, the LNNB may be used to determine which intellectual or cognitive tasks a patient may or may not be able to complete. The battery can also be used to arrive at underlying causes of a patient's behavior. More specifically, information regarding the location and nature of the brain injury or dysfunction causing a patient's problems is collected. The LNNB is also used to help distinguish between brain damage and functional mental disorders such as schizophrenia. Also, within the category of schizophrenia, the battery can be used to help distinguish between patients with normal neuropsychological functioning and those with clear deficits. Besides its specifically clinical use, the battery is sometimes used for legal purposes. The presence or severity of a brain injury may be measured as part of an evaluation used in the court system. The LNNB is based on the work of A. R. Luria, a Russian neuropsychologist who performed pioneering theoretical and clinical work with regard to brain functions. Luria believed in primarily qualitative approach to assessment and was opposed to standardization. He did not believe that neuropsychological functioning could be measured quantitatively. Thus, although his name is part of the test itself, his contribution to the Luria Nebraska neurological battery is entirely theoretical. Also, the LNNB is based in part on Luria's neuropsychological investigation, a measure developed by Christensen in 1975. This test included items asked by Luria in his clinical interviews, some of which are used in the LNNB. The battery written in 1981 by Charles Golden is appropriate for people aged 13 and older and takes between 90 and 150 minutes to complete. It consists of 269 items in the following 11 clinical scales which are reading, writing, arithmetic, visual, memory, expressive language, receptive language, motor function, rhythm, tactile and intellectual. Scores for three summary scales can also be calculated pathognomic, right hemisphere and left hemisphere. A children's version of the battery called the Luria Nebraska Neuropsychological Battery for Children LNNBC appropriate for children aged 8 to 12 is also available. The probability of brain damage is assessed by comparing an individual score on each of the battery's 11 clinical scales to a critical level appropriate for that person's age and educational level. For example, if a person has 5 to 7 scores above the critical level, they most likely have some signs of neurological impairment. 8 or more scores above the critical level indicate a clear history of neurological disorder. Summary Neurology is the branch of medicine that focuses on the nervous system and its disorders. The branch of psychology that focuses on this relationship between brain functioning and behavior is known as neuropsychology. The psychological tests and other procedures employed in a neuropsychological examination is guided by the purpose of the examination, the neurological intactness of the examining and the thoroughness of the examination. The neuropsychological examination generally includes history taking, mental status examination and administration of tests and procedures which are designed to discover any problem of neuropsychological functioning. A variety of tests and measurement procedures have been developed to assess all conceivable aspects of neuropsychological functioning like interviews, rating scales, case histories, case studies, tests, and neuropsychological test batteries. The Wisconsin card sorting test is a neuropsychological test of set shifting, that is, the ability to display flexibility in the face of changing schedules of reinforcement. 
Due to the varied nature of the tasks on the Weschler scales, including the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale and the Weschler Intelligence Scale for children, and the wide variety of responses required make it a good tool to bring light on the existence of any neuropsychological deficit.